It's okay. new product time. There is a pile of new products. I know. All right. Okay. I'll we'll give you a little bit one. of a break. I'll okay. do the first one. Okay. All right. Well, you cannot buy this from us, but it is a new product. It is the Hackaday 10th anniversary. Who um, are new to the show um, and don't know me, I started Hackaday 10 years ago. And uh, so I had to record a little video and talk about why I made the okay. site. And uh, um, one of the things they said is, you know, the site never belonged to me. In fact, I don't run the site anymore. A whole group of editors and people, um, past, present, and future, will continue to run mm -hmm. Hackaday forever. Mm -hmm. um, but what I wanted to do is have something special. So you and I chatted. We chatted with Hackaday. And we said, let's do something really neat. And so we did a, um, a Hackaday trinket version. This is one of the first times where we did co-branding. Um, with a um, yeah, we did a dig button a long, long time ago. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is it's just like the trinket five volt that you know and love, except instead of uh, being blue, it's now black with white silk screen. And on the back, we replaced the Adafruit logo and the little bootloader note with um, the Hackaday skull and crossbones, which actually fits quite nicely right between these little holes. And then it says Hackaday celebrates ten yeah. years. What's cool so. is um, I designed that logo and I made the site ten years ago. And I always thought the logo um, it's great was, on a PCB. Per was perfect for PCBs. Yeah, it's perfect because it silk screens yeah. very nicely. So yeah. yeah, what a great logo. So um, you can only get it on From the Hackaday store. On the Hackaday store, but this is going to be tonight's prize. What? Yeah, so I'm going to give away a special edition. Okay, Hackaday. it's special it's edition. Very, yeah. Special edition. We don't know if we're going to be making more. It's up to them. But yeah, yep. we have we have a couple extra. We'll give away one tonight. So, yeah. so pay attention. We'll, yeah, I can't wait to see what type of projects people do because they're going to do them and they'll send them to Hackaday. This is the Gemma in comparison. If you want to how, how yeah. So yeah, these are small chips. What's funny is the AT Tiny uh, 85 is about the same size yeah. as the at Mega 328, the QFNs or the, this one has many more pins, but it's not that much bigger than this. Yeah. Maybe a half a million or a million or more on each side. Okay. Okay. Next up, um, we now have other editions of Eagles. So yeah. for all the folks who asked, they said, well, you know, I really want this version, that version. We're adding all of the versions of Eagle. Um, one of the things that we do with um, anyone who buys Eagle is we give you a free embroidered badge um, that has Eagle on it. And also, um, according to Cadsoft, the makers of Eagle, we are the number one seller of Eagle in North America already. So um, we've had just this few versions, the Lady Ada blends. And now we're putting the rest in by popular request. So mm -hmm. um, do check it out. Next up, we got a book. This book is a good book. This is Wearable Electronics by Kate Hartman. Kate Hartman wrote all about things. If you want conductive materials, if you want to read about Flora, Lilypad, Gemma, other types of projects, things that you can wear, that you can design. This is great. This is, it's, first off, it's got these beautiful, beautiful photos in it. It's color with awesome photos and diagrams. So like one of the things that really pushes me towards carrying a book is does it have really good um, diagrams and photos because like a lot of books like they kind of, they're very text heavy and it's not, it's hard to learn without a lot of good photos. But this has great photos and great projects, a lot of leap pad stuff, there's a little bit of floor stuff as well, as well as just like general, just like what are sensors? What kind of sensors can you use? Yeah, here you go, here's a, here's a fun flora hanging out here. Um, so do check it out and uh, pick it up if you're interested in wearables. Kate Harmon is an expert in this. She's been doing this for like six or seven years now. She's really good at it. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, we've got a little board. You made this. What's this? Uh, this is an update to um, the, the gyro, not the delicious um, Greek food, but a gyroscope. Um, we have upgraded from the L3G D20 to the L3G D20H, which is a little bit smaller, but is actually uh, basically code compatible. The ID um, register is a little bit different. The, the pins, little, um, the value of it's different, so you can determine which one you are connected to. Our code actually uses both. It's, it's just fine. And in general, unless you check the ID register, um, all your code will be exactly uh, compatible. Um, this one has a little bit lower power consumption. It has much better uh, noise immunity um, for the um, uh, nano... Oh, I can't remember the unit of the noise. But the, the, the root hertz noise for the gyros is much lower, so you should get less drift and um, sort of random walk behavior with your gyro. So check it out. And we also just changed the size a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. But otherwise, it's pin compatible with the old one. It's just an upgrade. But ST's been coming out with new sensors constantly, okay. so we want to keep Next, up to date. Uh, uh, this is kind of neat. This 
it seems very boring until you see what it can do. Look at this! Woohoo! I know. This is a nice animated yeah. animated GIF or animated GIF, however you want to pronounce it. Let me um you one second. Let me yeah. plug this in. This okay. plugs into here, and then this plugs into here. It's gonna turn on the overhead here. Wait, hold on, I'm not ready. Oh, so yeah, this is the um the back of it. It's a uh, 32 by 32. One second. I'm gonna back, back, back out back, of back, that. Back, 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 back. Okay, this is a 32 by 32 matrix, and this one is. Um, we had one that was small and one that was larger, and this is in the middle. So it's got five millimeter pitch between each pixel, and uh, it's incredibly bright. I can also hold it up to show. I mean, it's really hard to see because it's so bright, um, but it's really good to put a diffuser. It's the same stuff that's used in video walls, and uh, I'm driving it here with an Arduino. Um, we have a tutorial on how to use an Arduino to do um, basic driving. Here's a, you know, an LED circle, and. Um, yeah, it's fun. We already have these, but now we have more of these. Uh, check it out if you want a thousand pixels at your control. Okay, next up. We got some assembled versions of the tea cobbler. Right. Right, right, right. We have uh, cobblers already, but um, we had the tea cobbler and the standard cobbler, and now we have, let me get rid of this. Now we have uh, assembled. Tea cobbler, so it's just like the cobbler you know and love, but it's pre-assembled and ready to go. Uh, we also have the kit in case you need it for some reason, but if you just want to use this with a breadboard, honestly, I would suggest getting um, this pre-assembled tea cobbler. It is is plug and play, um, great for getting solderless projects working with your Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, and it brings out all of the pins. And there's a lot, and it brings it out in the same order that you would see it on uh, diagrams that use the Pi B Plus. So it's very easy to use. Okay. So we also have um, the regular old cobbler now assembled. Also as well. assembled, yeah. yeah. Got that. Oh yeah, it's been this two weeks. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we have the the Model B standard cobbler also available in assembled format. Um, we started with the kits because that's what we have available. Um, we can get those in the store very fast while we gear up the manufacturing to get these assembled. Um, but now we have them both assembled, so check them out. Okay, um, this one's mine. So we've been working with lots of educators. And one of the things they asked for is custom packs. So this is a University of Virginia custom Raspberry Pi pack. There was just some specific things they wanted in there for their class yeah. curriculum. So um, we're going to start listing these. One of the things that we do is when a, when a school um, says, here's a pack that we have for our students, and we found this very useful, um, anyone on the internet can order, order it too. Um, the curriculum, sometimes they post up, sometimes they don't. But usually they just want to have a, um, a very specific one with just uh, what their class has. So anyways. Got that. Next up, we got this knobby thing. Knobs. Yeah. All sorts of knobs. We have quite a few knobs, actually. OK. All right. So do you want me to, do you want yeah. to show all these? Or? Well, uh, yeah, sure. So this first, let's start with the first one. So this is a uh, scrubber knob. And these are all the other knobs. I'll just show this one. So yeah. this is a knob that you, you that I call the scrub. There's no name for it, but I call it a scrubber knob because often it's called like scrubbing through a video, scrubbing through audio. And um, the, the thing you would use is a physical knob like this. Um, and this is a uh, knob that works with our rotary encoder. You need to have a D shaft for this. Um, but it plugs right on like this, and it press fits in. And then um, it basically turns it into a nice knob. And what's nice is that you know, if, you're, if you want to do like this sort of rotating action with your rotary encoder, um, this is really great. It'll look really good on an on a enclosure or whatever. And, uh, it's very basic, but it kind of it's a lot easier to use than um, one of the knobs that you have to kind of grip because a lot of people are more used to like doing this. I don't know from like stereos and stuff. Okay. All right. So next up. Yeah. Do you want me to show you the the one the rest of them? Because uh, like, let's do the the next knob and then I'll I'll, I'll okay, uh, so like this one. Yeah, this one and then well, this one's special. So this one is a really really nice knob and it's expensive, but it's really really nice. It is a solid. Um, I think it's aluminum. Um, Machined knob, it's like oh, gorgeous. Um, well, the photo is really nice too. Yeah. Well, for these, you know, what we can do is we can zoom in a little bit. I, I press. Oh yeah, we have to. Yeah. So that I don't know if that works. Zoom, 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 no, zoom, zoom, you zoom, want zoom. to go like this. Okay. Oh wow, I didn't know it did that. It does this. Okay, it does that. Nice. Yeah. Um, come on. Uh, so yeah, this knob is is machine knob, and it's like super swanky. And it's like knurled, and um, it uses a set screw which I, I actually don't have installed here, 
Um, but you, before you put on this uh, kind of grippy rubber thing, you could put a set screw in. So you can use it with a T18 spliced knob, or you can use it with a rotary encoder. You can use either because there's a set screw instead of a uh, kind of a, a knobby part. And it's just like super fancy. And I really like this very, really fancy knob. Really good for your very fancy projects. Okay. Okay. And then next up. Yeah, we have. And then these two we can show together. So this is two slim knobs. And the reason I have these is that a lot of times you have a project, you don't have a lot of space. So you don't want to have a big chunky knob. And I noticed these on like these, uh, these Moog synthesizers, um, they're very slim. Can you um, drop the next couple? Yeah. So this one's a tall one. And these are a T18. I'll show that off on the overhead. And they work with potentiometers. And then the, the next one is a shorter version. So it's exact same knob, but there's one that was long and one short. I don't know. I don't know which one you'll need, but choose. And then on the overhead, these are for T18 uh, spline potentiometers. So you just make sure that you have ones that are like the, has like a star shape. And it just press fits right on. And you can see it's a nice slim knob. It does feel really good. It's aluminum. It's got this nice little marker on it. It's kind of a nice little anodized feel to it. It's, it's nice and rugged, but it is, um, Pretty simple and just fits right on, press fit. Little and this one's a little short knob. So short and long. Okay. One big, one small. That's the knobs. Okay. So next up we have wire. Wire. But special wire. It's actually not wire, it's cable. Cable. Um yeah, I won't I'll show it on the overhead later, but to explain it, this photo is way better than anything I get on the overhead. It's actually coaxial cable. So even though it's about as thick as, as wire you would normally just like use for wiring up a project, it actually has a, a core um, wire, which is uh, like 30 gauge or 28 gauge, and I don't remember, look at the, the tech specs, a stranded uh, wire, it's like 30 gauge, 28 gauge, and then there's a um, plastic coating, which you can see like right there, and then over that there's a over braiding sheath, so it's actually got a, a grounding, uh, braid on it so you can use this for in general this is used for like EMG wires EEG wires or biomedical instrumentation or like RF sometimes although it, it's pretty thin um, although it, it has you know I do see it used for like little you know UFL to SMA adapters and such but the wire is is super thin um, can I show in the overhead yeah I'll show the wire part so you can see it's a, it's a cable but yeah it's like super thin and extremely flexible and um, Oftentimes you have to buy like 100 meters of this or 100 feet of this, but this is only like 10 feet, and, which is good for like most projects. You want to get a signal from there to here, and you want it to be um, uh, uh, shielded. This is really good. You can ground the shielding to the chassis ground, and then you have your wire going through, and it's less likely to get noisy or um, pick up stray signals um, if it's shielded. So, yes, yeah, it's called RG174U wire. For, okay. Even though it's not wire, it's a cable. I don't know. I, I can't help it. It's so thin, I call it a wire. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, we can probably get to these pretty quick. These are the bits. Uh, carbide bits. Carbide bits. Yeah. Uh, we put in drill bits before, and um, these uh, the drill bits are for just drilling into something. You want to poke a hole into your material, uh, especially PCBs. They're great for that, but these are end mills. So they're, they look a lot like bits, but they're not. They, have a, they don't have a point. They are, have a, a square. Uh, you can kind of see they, they, they don't have a, a pointed tip. They have like a square cutting edge. And we use these actually in-house to cut PCBs on our PC, uh, PCB mill. We have another mill, which is a very precise CNC device that takes this and spins it really, really, really fast and cuts through the PCB um, copper layer to make uh, etched out PCBs. And since we found them so handy, we thought we would carry them in the store as well. We have them in a couple different sizes. Um, if you have a precision CNC mill, that these might be handy. This is an eighth inch shank. It's very common. These are uh, tungsten carbide um, tips, and then the body is a uh, white steel, so you can you can grip onto it pretty easily with your collet. Um, they do have a, a 
five or eight millimeter long um, cutting edge, which is a little bit long, but they're also really low cost. So even though they're not as short as I'd like them to be, um, they're a little bit more li liable to break than the short ones. We haven't had any breakage issues. Honestly, when we cut PCBs, they get dull before they break um, because you're cutting through you know, fiberglass or, or copper. Um, we find that they're good for like five to 10 hours of cutting before they need to be replaced. But at four bucks each, you know, we can cut like five or six PCBs and we replace them. Okay. Um, next up. The, the latest. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, this is the latest four channel oscilloscope from Regal. This is the uh, R1054Z, I think. I don't know the exact part number. It's a, a four channel oscilloscope. It's a really great deal. If you want a four channel scope, it's I think a gigahertz sample. Um, divide over four channels, so if you have all four channels going, you get 250 megahertz instead of a whole gigahertz. Um, but if you have one channel, it's gigahertz. It's a color display. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It comes with probes. It's got, you know, good triggering, good software, and it's a total deal. It's under 500 bucks. This is such a good deal. When I got my Tektronix scope, it was $2,000. Now, granted, the Tektronix is a really, really nice scope with excellent triggering and does all sorts of stuff that this one may not, but like really, if you're doing any kind of electronics and you need four channels, this is such a great way to get started. Um, there's even optional software you can buy to upgrade your scope with like signal decoding and stuff, but it's optional. You don't need it. Works great as a scope without that extra software, but you know, it's one of those add-on things that scope makers love nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so do check it out. It's an excellent deal if you want a four channel scope. I have not seen anything this nice. Yeah. And this is why we carry it. Okay. Um, and next up, we have some more filament. Um, no need to go over this. There's just more colors, um, blue. more types. Black. So um, This is blue, Adafruit blue. Yeah. And, and so, this is not Adafruit green. So we're, we're just adding all the top colors in there. So just go to the 3D printing section. Soon and we'll have see. red and yellow and translucent. Yeah. But we're just adding them slowly and surely. It's all Ultimaker filament, which is, uh, we have found the best PLA and ABS filament. We also yeah. have flexi filament. It's all good stuff. I'll, I'll say this. Um, so people always ask, um, hey, Adafruit, I see all these 3D printing projects you guys do. You know, why do they always look good? And like, how, you know, how, how do you do this? A lot of it has to do with the materials we're using and the printers. And so um, we use the Tazbot and we use the, the Ultimaker uh, filament. OK. OK. It's LCD time. LED. LED time. LED time. It's always LCD time. It's always LCD time. But so it's the also, break. sometimes it's LED time, too. LED time. OK. Okay, it's all an right. LED party. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to show a bunch of photos. Just show them all off. Photos. These are the 14, the dual 14 segment LEDs. We have them now in many other colors. We have now white, beautiful white. We have yellow, orangish yellow, beautiful glowing color. We have yellow green, which is kind of a limey green. We have pure green, which is the higher forward voltage green, but is a beautiful blue green color. Um, and let me show these on the overhead. Yeah, because then, then I'll we'll move to the next ones. After that. Yeah, so this is. Why? Uh, this is really bright. Hold on. Let me well, you can turn off the light. Hold on. Let me uh, autofocus this. Autofocus. Go autofocus. You might not like it because of the. Um, no way. Because of the LEDs. There you yeah, go. Yeah, it's too bright. Actually, sometimes if you add more. Okay, anyways, Adding this is light. incredibly bright, but just believe me, there's 14 segments here. Um, I should have. Uh, Diffuse it a little bit. No, it's still too bright. I forgot to bring my diffusing material. Okay, that's maybe a little better. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's got 14 segments, and these are just the raw displays. This is the white one, and then let me get the uh, pure green one. We just have this set up on a um, on a breadboard here to light up all the segments. This is the pure green. It's way too bright. Should the yellow? Maybe this one. The thing is, I actually really like these to be extra bright, which is why it takes us a while to get all the colors in, because I'm like rejecting and accepting samples, because um, I want them to be really good looking. And um, because when you multiplex them, you want them to be super bright. And we have yellow green as well. I'll just show this even though. I think this is also way too bright. This one's not too bad, actually. OK, so that's what it looks like. You have you know alphanumeric digits. And then you're like, wow, there's a lot of pins required to run this, because you have 14 anodes or cathodes, and then you know two of the other. Um, so in, to make it easier for you, we have a backpack. So maybe I'll show these, and then we can show the photos as well. Um, so I'm going to just show the, the backpack with sockets in it so I can plug in 
the LEDs on the fly. So like here is the demo and I'll have pure green on this side and then yellow green on the other. Um, uh, this one shows uh, you, know, you can have um, basically the controller over I squared C. You can have it set to um, display characters or numbers. Um, we have a library for it for Arduino and Trinket and people have ported it to other um, uh, boards like Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone or Pick or whatever. Um, so the backpack basically takes all the pins that you would normally need to control four times, four digits times 14 segments and um, does over I squared C so you can just say like light up these pixels and it just does it automatically. And uh, most people prefer to actually have the backpack. We have the raw displays in case you want them, um, but we have tutorial example code for this backpack. So honestly, use I squared C two pins and you can connect up to eight of these in a row if you want to share the I squared C pins. Okay. It's a handy backpack. All right, so Lady Ada, guess what? We're going to run 10 minutes over, so you can just spend as much time as you okay. want on this stuff. But um, I did all the LEDs. Yeah, so next up. Um, these, are these. these are the nice photos. Yeah, these are the nice photos so that you we can have see of these. The backpack. You just have to solder the, um, the backpack together, which just means putting the, uh, yeah. the color of LEDs you want onto the backpack. That's you get the fun. backpack like this, yeah. and then you connect up like the yellow or green or blue or whatever LEDs. OK, there's a lot of LEDs. Yeah, so I'll just keep going through these photos. Okay, I'll set up the next demo while you're doing that. Okay, this is, which is this demo? Yeah, this I'm gonna is. Be, I'm gonna be ready. This is the other uh, fr front and back of what you get. So this is yeah, you actually get the same backpack but different color LEDs. Such as the LED color yeah. is different. Okay, next up we got a um, phone charger, right? We have one? the we have a key charger. A key or charger. A chi charger. Chi charger. Um, key we charger. have the receivers for the wireless uh, Qi protocol, and now we have the transmitter. So the, the receivers, um, you know, we've had these for a while, and they look like this, and they're these coils, and then, you know, you have to have a transmitter that sends the wireless power and then the receiver, and this is a standard now, so we have other transmitter receiver pairs, but they're, they're only for each other. They're not like a protocol. What's nice about these is actually like nose, it can detect when it's connected and it, it regulates the power and it's, it's just kind of a little bit more elegant and you get exactly five volts. So um, you don't have to worry about your voltage fluctuating too much. Okay. So this is just it showing, but I'll, I'll demo this um, right now. So this is the transmitter and you power it over USB. So yeah, thanks. So you, um, you just connect it over to, uh, this is actually my USB adapter and it draws one amp out of here or maybe one amp out of here to give you a half an amp here or two amps here to give you one amp here. There's about 50% loss over the, this transmission and this reception. That's wireless power, that's how it goes. And then this is you know, a kind of a standard Android phone, for example. There's also, um, we have an adapter for iPhone and also we have just the- Pretty much any phone you want, this will go Raw well receiver, yes. Yeah, so this, is, this is a micro USB, which we showed on the previous. It just plugs in. And then this is the receiver side, this is the transmitter side. So when you put this on top, this LED lights up saying yes, it detected, and it's now charging. So when I remove it, it's gonna say not charging. Hold on. Well now it's like, hey, you, you turned me on. And then when you connect it, oh, come on. Man, of course, not my demo's not working, hold on. We're, uh... hold on. Yeah, if you put it on there. The phone, I'm just demoing it with the phone. Yeah. Anything that uses five volt, and up to an amp. Yeah, can one of use the things this. that I think is going to be neat is you know people can make sculptures that are completely sealed and that's right. And, and you put it, and it when you put it on the base, it charges. That's it right. Up. It's just like the toothbrush that you have. If you have a, a, a smart toothbrush that yeah. has a wireless base charger, so any project you want that has to be waterproof or dustproof, and you want a wireless charger, you can have up to like five millimeters of material yeah. that's not non-metal material. So it could be in a case glass, too. You know, you can a make case, your own case. Fiberglass, whatever. As long as it's not metal, you can have it. You know, enclosed yeah. and then charge. Okay, next up. All right. Soldering iron. Yeah, soldering iron. This is a fancy soldering iron, and we already had a soldering iron that's like this, a pen type soldering iron that just plugs in. But this one's really nice. First off, this one has a more calibrated temperature knob on the side, which is pretty around. sweet. Let's go there. Yeah. So this one, there's a little knob on the side so you can set the temperature. And I measured it with, um, my, my like a thermocouple, and it's, it's not like exact, right? Like you're not gonna get like exactly 280, but it's within like 20 degrees. 
So if you're using like silver bearing solder or lead free solder, lead solder, instead of, you know, just having an iron and just like, it just burns the hell out of everything, this will get you much better performance and it heats up very fast. This also got a nice thick cord and it's grounded, yay. And the best part about this, which is why I carried it, is you can change out the tips and That's the handy. tips are HACO compatible. So the HACO mm. tips, which we have, which are like the best quality tips you can get, and the the real strength of the qual the quality of your tip, the quality of your soldering has a lot to do about the tip. Is it the right shape and size, and it's it's nicely plated? This is like getting a budget HACO. Like it's. A it's basically like yeah. I mean, I don't want to say that because like a HACO is a is a really really nice yeah. tool. But you get all the tips not. of HACO. But you get you yeah, say, yeah. You have a ceramic heater, and you get a HACO, but you don't have to have the full base. And this is small. And it's portable. Yeah. And you can put it in your toolbox or your purse or wherever and uh, take it on the go. Or you just don't want to have a lot of space. Or if you only want to spend like 25 bucks. Um, we tested it. I soldered up a bunch of kits. It's a great soldering iron. And it's it's a step down from the full hacko, but it's it's well, it'll work quite well. Much better than like a $10 soldering iron. So it's definitely worth yeah. 25 bucks. Okay. You can get, get some tips while you're at it. Next up. Um we're at the last couple of products, Lady Ada. Okay, great. It's that time okay. to debut the Intel Edison. It Whee! is here, it is here, it is here, it is we here. We finally have them. Yeah, it's here, we have some. Um, unknown, you know, um, unknown if, 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 the, if the world is gonna say this is the next platform. There's so many choices now, we like having these choices. Yeah. Um, it's very new, there's uh, not a lot of tutorials or things yet, but it just got started. So oh yeah, I I have not tried this yet. We just got these in. Yeah, so let's show you on the overhead. Like here's So this is how big it is. So it's small. Um and maybe I'll show that it is it is not that much bigger than a, a pro trinket, so it mm. is quite small. And it's a full Atom processor, it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, and um it's pretty intense. It's just all in one board. The only thing is that to get to these pins, you have to use this connector, which is a 0.4 millimeter pitch connector. It is too small for mortals to solder. I mean, you can't, you, basically you can't. I don't I want to suggest hand soldering, not a good idea, um, unless you have the right tools. Uh, and so even though we sell it alone, I really don't suggest getting it alone unless you already have the adapter board kit. So this is the adapter board kit that you can get. And um, this slides in and plugs in and provides you with um, a USB connection and um, as well as GPIO. So you have like the USB debug and, and connect. Has GPIO, has some buttons and maybe an LED or two. I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on here. Um, I think so maybe some level shifting of some sort. Uh, so this is this, the mini breakout. Um, so this is like the, I don't know why this PCB is so thick kind of a mystery, but I'm sure there's a good reason. This is like a massive PCB. It's like chunky. Um, so this is the, the, the basic breakout, which I think is the minimal to even do stuff with it. And then we also have the uh, uh, Arduino board, which also comes with an Edison. But the add-on board for it is, is much bigger and has like, it's not an Arduino, but it's Arduino-esque, right? It has, it has kind of the Arduino shape. And you can plug in shields. It has level shifting on all the pins. I'm almost positive these are all level shifters because it's 1.8 volt logic. Um, it has USB host. You can plug in a you know, keyboard or mouse or whatever. You plug in the Edison here, and you have a, you know, buttons and a micro USB and all sorts of extras. So you know, it's basically like a, 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 it's running a Linux distribution. Um, you can kind of treat it like uh, a low power, um, very small Raspberry Pi, kinda, except it doesn't have a display and it doesn't do HDMI, but it does have Wi-Fi built in and, and, and USB built in. And also you don't, you don't need an SD card, it's, it's self-running. Most positive, right? It doesn't have, yeah, it has, it has flash on board. So you, you know, it's an all-in-one and it's meant for, it's, it's small, so it's meant for, you know, like let's say you're doing like a, a robot and you want to be very small, you don't wanna have a full Raspberry Pi and you don't want a full beagle bone on it. It's a little board, you wanna have wearables, maybe you wanna have, um, a quadcopter and you want to have a lot of processing power on it, this would be a really good match for a project like that because it's very powerful and it's running Linux, but it also has um, this, this small form factor. It has wireless capability built in, um, but it's easy to use because it, it has Arduino IDE that you can use with it. Okay, so here's some other photos of the um, board. 
And this is what it looks like while it's in there. Right. And I then, don't want to plug it in because it's not meant for multiple insertions. Yeah. I do want to play with this some more. And then there is something else that you can get, which is this. Yeah, I just showed that. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, we're just going for okay. this here. Yeah, no, but there's two different boards. There's the mini board and yeah. then the Arduino board. And the mini board is less expensive and the, and the Arduino board is bigger uh -huh. but more expensive. Pick the one you want. I would get one or the other. Uh, again, we also do have it just the module, but it's not suggested for mortals. Yeah. Okay. And then last up, this is the last new product of the night. Another Intel product. This is yeah, the, the Intel Galileo story. 2. Right? Yes. Rev Gen 2 yeah. of the Galileo, which we actually got in like an hour before the show. Uh, so I don't have a lot of information about it. It's a lot like, I know it's basically compatible with the Galileo. I think they changed a couple pins to be uh, the raw GPIO instead of going through the GPIO expander. Check the product description. Um, the Galileo is you know, another Intel product. This is um, a much beefier processor, although the, I think this is their, their experimentation into um, the Edison. The Edison's kind of the Galileo's little sister, I would say. Uh, the Edison is basically like a, a full-fledged computer that you can program with the Arduino IDE. It's extremely powerful. Um, it's good for when you don't need portability, because uh, it's, it's big, but you need a lot of horsepower. It's, it's very powerful. We even have a, a Tony Nicola did a write-up about comparisons between the Raspberry Pi, Beagle and Black, and Galileo, so do check that out if you want more details about yeah. whether you need this power horse of a project. Okay, and with that, Lady Ada, you've I think I wrapped up the new products. Okay. Yay. I finished on N9. Good work. Yay.